Nationwide protest over vaccine policy. Nandual admits Starbrook PSA was a mistake. Speeding minibus crashes into truck on London Highway. And Henry Boy's murder one year later. I'm Mariko Bulford, and welcome to tonight's edition of Uncut News. The government now demands that persons visiting all public buildings, including private businesses and places of worship, must be vaccinated or show proof of a negative test result. The opposition has described the move as authoritarian. In fact, this has triggered protests against the government's vaccine policy all across the nation. The major commercial district of Linden was shut down completely today, as was Kokwane. However, they weren't alone. While in Region 2, several businesses have refused to enforce the government's measure entirely. There were also reports of protests in Regions 9 and 7. Today was the first day of the new school term. Well, sort of. In actuality, only about 10% of the nation's schools actually open today, with the majority of children expected to attend school on a rotational basis. However, the reopening of secondary schools won't truly begin until the end of the month, as the Ministry of Education has made it clear that they want all secondary school aged children to be fully vaccinated against the Rona before re-entering the school building. During a recent interview, Nandalal admitted that the Exxon contract is one of the most lopsided agreements signed in this country's history. He also called the unfair contract a mistake that Guyana must learn from when going forward with signing future oil and gas agreements. In fact, he claims that he's always believed that the deal was bad, and there's nothing you can tell him differently, as the coalition didn't even consult them, the then-opposition, before signing the contract in 2016. However, he stopped short of saying it should be renegotiated because of a concept called the sanctity of a contract, supposedly. Hess is planning to use the U.S. $150 million from the recent sale of its Denmark subsidiary to support its operations over here. CEO John Hess said the proceeds from the sale will go towards funding its oil exploration program offshore Guyana. Hess increased its share in the Kaitra block only a few months ago following the farm down of 5% working interest by Catalea Energy. So they took that 5%. Are you one of the chosen few that benefits from 2T3? Good for you! Check out these amazing vehicles that just arrived at Best Buy Auto Sales. This 2016 Toyota Area Grand Sport Edition. This 2014 Range Rover Evoque. And this 2016 Lexus RX 200T are all on sale. They are all fully loaded and come with all modern features. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Or visit the showrooms at Lot 171 Peter Rose Street, Queenstown, or Lot 2 Lama Street, and tell them Noriko sent you to get in on a sweet deal. Early Sunday morning, 31-year-old minibus driver Michael Daniels was injured after he crashed into a truck along the Suzdike Linden Highway. Daniels was allegedly speeding when he lost control of the minibus, slamming it headfirst into a passing truck. Well, for some reason, the truck driver, 35-year-old Rameshwar Mirage, is currently in police custody while Daniels is currently hospitalized. According to the police in Linden, two men are currently on the run after they abandoned a car full of ganja near the Wisma Bridge. Last night, the men fled from the vehicle after officers approached them. The trunk contained over 44 pounds of marijuana with a street value of 6.6 .6 million Guyana dollars. The ranks then went to the home of one of the suspects whose brother refused to a search from the police. He was arrested for allegedly assaulting two officers. Last night, a misunderstanding over a pig led to 16-year-old Tyrese George and 56-year-old Marvin Ross being chopped in the head at Number 51 Village Quarantine Police. The police say that Tyrese's father, Terrence, and one Wayne Hallaker had got into a row over a pig. But for some reason, Marvin decided to come into a conflict with a cutlass in hand, and Tyrese took it and attempted to chop Wayne. Wayne, however, took the cutlass from him and chopped the teenager in the head. Seeing his son get injured, Terrence lashed Marvin in the face with a piece of wood. Both Marvin and Tyrese were treated at the hospital, whilst Terrence George was arrested. Hey, I'm interrupting this program to let you know that not all truck parts are created equal. Some does work hard without any problems for a long time, while others does make your truck broke down quick and got your runny pockets again. Get genuine high-quality parts from Powered Automotive Truck Spares and Engine Parts and extend the life of your repair. They're the authorized dealer in Guyana for Hammer USA products like brake valves, clutch discs, universal bearings, and other 
Visit them at 1161 EE Eccles or call them on 6970171. Powered Automotive, the number one truck and engine parts store in Guyana. If you didn't know, well, now you know. It's now time for today's Rona Report. Today, the nation recorded 101 new cases. There are now 647 persons dead, 38 in the ICU, 2,218 in home isolation. The total number of confirmed cases around the nation now stands at 26,611. So please, people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before you leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds. And remember to give six feet of space between you and others. A house fire in Mocha has left nine persons homeless. Homeowner Mangel Roberts said that the fire started in the upper flat just around 7 p.m. on Sunday. The fire service was summoned, but by the time they reached, the building was already engulfed in flames. The losses are estimated to be in the millions. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Serial cop shooter Harry Lol Motilol called Ginger Harry, has been identified as the prime suspect behind the recent shooting of two GRA enforcement agents in Mahika. Last Thursday night, the two customs officers were shot to their face and abdomen during a joint anti-smuggling operation. Multilaw is apparently no stranger to shooting cops. In 2016, he was sentenced to four years in prison for shooting a GRA agent who was intercepting his smuggling operation. Then again, in 2020, he was charged for shooting at Kanu agents for the same thing. And now he's wanted for shooting at the GRA and the GPF for the same thing. Moti Lol has yet to be arrested. Wow, I wonder why he hasn't been arrested yet. I wonder if he has any friends in high places. Of course he does. And now for our stupid news of the day. You know what I think is stupid? The fact that today marks the one-year anniversary of the murder of the Henry boys, and we are still no closer to finding their killers. Well, we all know the two junkies didn't do it. The cops just needed someone to pin the crime on in hopes that the public would just forget about the whole crime and just move on with their lives. And judging from the looks of things, I shudder to believe that the police were absolutely correct. People have moved on, and now the Henry and Singh families may never get justice mainly because of politics and weak state institutions. And the only reason these institutions, such as the police, are weak is because of politics. This is why the mother of one of the slain boys asked for it not to be politicized, as she rightfully knew that the second it does, her family would never get justice. And she was right. It was already a slim chance they would have even solved the crime anyway. But unfortunately, the investigation was botched from the beginning. The investigation started too late, as they started searching almost two days afterwards, and during the rainy season. Any trace of evidence would have been washed away by then, and they knew it. Then the police and the government refused outside help because they did not truly seem interested in solving the murder. They only wanted to give the appearance of actually doing something. The police were never forthcoming with the public, and especially the family. In fact, they arrested a family member and claimed he murdered Harris Singh. Whether this is true or not, the lack of transparency in the case means that even if this is the truth, or if the truth does eventually pop up, we may never even believe it, as this is just another example of how the police have destroyed their credibility. And that, I feel, is pretty stupid. Don't miss the ground 50% off sale and get a free one-month Digicel Prime bundle plan. Available at City Mall, Starbrook Square, Regent in Light Street, Massey Turkine, and Massey Providence. Shop early, limited stocks available. Moving on to our Uncut News News Poll Question of the Day. Every day we post a question about current events in the nation, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So you give your responses in the comments and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Friday's question was, do you support the Gas to Shore project? Angie the Atheist says, to me the Gas to Shore project is necessary for economic growth in Ghana. First we need cheaper energy, then we need cleaner energy. You see, you are too dependent on crude oil, and because it has a high price, it affects all industries in the country. So alone wind energy are cheap and clean, but the batteries to store that power are very expensive, and they have a short lifespan. I do believe in hydroelectric power, and that it should be the primary means of producing electricity in Ghana. But such a project will cost roughly around the same as a gas to shore project. That's money we don't have. ExxonMobil is willing to fund and build the Gas Shore project, and then they will hand it over to us after they make back the money. King Tut says, the PPP loves white elephants. Mikey Mike says, Gas Shore, one step forward, four steps backwards. 
Troy DeWeaver says the gas to shore is profitable, but then to make any sense, the government needs to let me in. Sounds like you just want a piece of the pie, Troy. Aha! So for tonight's question, how was the return to school? Should they have done something differently? Think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. Check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Rico Bullford saying good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here, or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!